I am a uh, agronomist and master degree in economics and PhD in coffee quality and processing. But first of all, I am coffee grower. I was born in a coffee farm and I was lucky enough to have a father to push me to work hard and a high school teacher mother to push me to go to school and to study at the same time. And I went to the university three times, agronomist, economics, and PhD, not only to be a researcher, not to be a professor, but to uh, improve the techniques applied in the business, in the coffee growing. And second, uh, it's, uh, we are very proud and happy to be here because this business model that it's a kind of a unique in Brazil, uh, all the benefits and the impacts that it brings to people li people's lives would not be possible without this direct relationship with uh, roasters and in the end with the f uh, final consumers. You're gonna see that. And uh, this opportunity and your choice of uh, regular daily choice to purchase these kind of coffees has a huge impact in the origin, in the people that work there, in the small communities that we operate in. And we would like to come here and to bring this, just uh, in a brief story, a brief uh, presentation for you. And unfortunately, we don't have that much time to present and to explain everything, but we will be here around to uh, have some conversations afterwards and even better to receive you in Brazil in a field trip that we could promote and uh, undertake together. So let's get uh, started. Uh, th in this presentation, uh, Di Matina and Sun Coffee logo, uh, it's important to mention that uh, another thing, uh, I haven't prepared that much the presentation, but um, Di Martina, uh, when we first met in uh, Atlanta, uh, Tony was alongside with a good friend and long-term client of ours, uh, Mr. Ms. Lee from Terra Rosa in Korea. And at the beginning, we had a good uh, feelings about Di Martina because good people get in touch with good people. So it was the first hint for us. And afterwards, when I came to Australia, uh, first time last year, uh, Gabby and Simon, they promoted a, an event, a very nice event, uh, for us to present our coffees and our uh, projects. And I felt uh, deeply that we were working with, starting to work with someone and uh, some people that really believe in what we believe. Uh, to bring prosperity through good business. So uh, it's our main aim, and I thank you again for giving us this opportunity of in partner, uh, in partnering with someone that uh, really wants to make something different and better. A lineup of this brief presentation, who we are, where we can come from, our approach, our engagement, and our coffees. Sun Coffee, uh, we born to be a specialty in 1999. Why? This guy, this is the current, current president and the founder of Sun Coffee, where he is here. Enrique Cambraia, he is all the members of Sun Coffee and their sons or eventually wives or other people because we are only 20, but we can see that there are more than that. Uh, he figured out he's a coffee grower. He figured out in 1993 when his father passed away that it was not possible to have a sustainable coffee business uh, producing commodity coffee and selling it ungraded to local brokers. They kept all the value of it. So he decided to shift from commercial coffee, commodity coffee to specialty and changed many things inside the farm, procedures, staff, structure, and put his backpack on in 1998 
and start to travel and to present the project and the coffees. And uh, he had quite a success on uh, the demand. The specialty coffee was in the beginning, meaning in US and other countries. Uh, and BSCA, the Brazilian Specialty Coffee Association, was also in the beginning. He's one of the founders. And it was good. Uh, he had, he ran out out of all the coffees he used to have with uh, in a 70 hectares coffee farm and instead of creating a regular trading company uh, at that time he had this this dream this thought he decided to create a cooperative a small one uh, from people gathering people from the same region to create something different to be only focused in his specialty in high quality and consistency and supplying these coffees directly to the specialty coffee buyers around the world. So that's in this way Sun Coffee started. In 2000, 2001, uh, we did, we, because I, I am a part of Sun Coffee, but I was not working there yet, uh, our first export uh, to Japan. It was only 184 bags. So there has been uh, two, 18 years. We are going to do our 80th, 18th uh, crop this year. Uh, and we grew. Uh, now, when I joined Sun Coffee, we produced, uh, in 2014, we produced 70,060 kilo bags. This year, it's going to be 200. Uh, and 6,000 hectares of coffee plantations. Our coffee farmers, uh, farms, they range from 70 hectares uh, of coffee plantation to 800. Uh, 800 is Henrique's farm where I am the general manager as well. Here's a picture of our warehouse. It was built in 2000 in a small plot, but now we have been expanding and uh, improving it. Nowadays, is a, uh, after a lot of efforts, it's a state-of-the-art dry milling machine. Very good. Our region is a very different region. Uh, Campo das Vertentes, we are running, seeking to have um, uh, official recognition in Brazilian government in uh, origin denomination. Uh, because still we are considered to be south of Minas, but completely different region. Uh, why we are in a, we consider that we are in a blessed region, mainly to produce high quality uh, natural coffees. Because we are in high plateaus in the heart of Minas Gerais, in altitude ranging from 950 to 1,250 meters. It's for, for Brazil, it's quite high. And since we are in the middle, that's why the, the meaning of vertentes is the region where divide, the two water basins are divided. So we are in high altitudes and in a flattish uh, landscape. And we have dry winter, which is very good because it's, it's when we are uh, harvesting our coffees. And here I put this picture for two reasons, to give you an idea of uh, the, the landscape and the region, and to, to prove that the gift that Gabi gave me when she visited us, I am using it regularly, the hat. It was not prepared, uh, I swear, because you are going to see there, are other picture, there is one other picture that we took with other friends, and I was using the hat. Uh, it's uh, so... Thank you, Gabi. It's uh, very good. He's the, the operational manager in Samambaya Farm. Here we are preparing a new plantation uh, in Samambaya Farm. And another picture of a plantation already established. So you can see a lot of mountains in a high altitude, but flattish condition, which makes uh, the coffee production quite efficient. Our approach, uh, it's interesting to mention that, because I don't know in your minds, I'm thinking with mine, uh, but there are many big cooperatives in Brazil with thousands, 
of members. And we believe uh, we don't want to grow uh, in number of uh, growers because we want to keep this uh, uh, aspect, which is to combine the benefits of both sides, regular trader with efficiency, great service, uh, access to the market, but we want to do it in a cooperative model with the participation of the community and our growers. So we are inviting, we are gonna see more growers to join the platform, but without expanding the number of uh, members that we have. Unique business model, it's a full transparent business model. Everybody who sells coffee through Sun Coffee, they know FOB price, the fees, the taxes, the costs, and the net price in their hands. Driving force for specialty, we don't have agronomists to go to the field to take care of uh, inputs, agrochemicals, uh, stores to sell boots or other things like other cooperatives does. We only do quality. Our interface with the farms starts when um, the 20 farms, when the harvest starts. So we manage all the quality control and have standard, uh, standard ways of doing the post harvest to keep the same consistency. Best performance and service and positive impact in the community. That's uh, uh, the sustainability for us. Sustainability, uh, we have been building it up upon prosperity through good business. There is, in our uh, mind, there is no other way of having real and long-term sustainability. So in the business, what we do is to add value to our growers through specialty coffee, but we need to combine the economic sustainability with the environment respect. In Brazil, it's regulation. It's an obligation for every farmer to set aside 20% of the f land as preserved forests. So we do that and go beyond. We do, uh, we monitor these systems with some uh, in San Coffee and uh, the farms that join the platform uh, with some variables, satellite images and other things uh, with uh, forest engineers, uh, how uh, our production ha is impacting uh, the environment. If something is going wrong, we can set some plans of action to try to mitigate the impacts because we want to um, leave behind a uh, healthy environment to the uh, next generations. And it's not only a matter of speech, because uh, I was talking to Simon today, uh, that are one first step of companies uh, that differentiate them from the, those who, had su who have success from those who fa fails. Uh, we need to dream uh, high, but having our feet firmly in the ground. But the second thing is who separate the companies, these two set of companies. Those who turn their intentions into actions and those who only have intentions. And of course, there are some delays, there are problems, but we are always trying hard to turn, in, turn our intentions into action. And uh, in satellite images, it's possible to see, to follow how the conditions of the environment have been improving with our way of growing coffee in this region. Even the water streams are having increasing the flow, uh, the animals have been showing up more frequently. There are many variables that we, we monitor to make sure that we are going the right direction. Another thing is, it's a very good, it's a, some people calls cause ourselves our, ourselves a kind of crazy because the traditional mindset in Brazil is we call it a street of coffee. It's a road between two rows, a uh, street, rua de café. People usually keep it as clean as possible like this ground here in order to, in their minds, the grass 
is competing against the coffee plant the coffee trees and causing loss damages and in our opinion we take care of the entire system not only the coffee trees so we keep the grass high all year long only cutting it now to do the harvest so we can avoid erosion we can create a much better microclimate to the insects and the animals who live there we can keep the co2 uh, retained in the organic material that we are leaving in the, the ground. So it's amazing. Another thing, uh, water protection. It's, uh, I already mentioned that. We have protection with fences, already protected with fences. This 20%, all the forests, all the water sources, springs and creeks, avoiding cattle and other uh, animals go inside. Of course, the wild animals, they can go whatever they want. And farming techniques with many other uh, beyond uh, grass management system. Precise agriculture is one of them. We, t we take samples of each one single hectare of plantation and we analyze many variables, uh, the nutrients, and with machines connected with the GPS, we have the maps, and we provide exactly what that piece of land needs in order to avoid uh, uh, waste of nutrients, which is uh, increase the cost and can be a kind of poison to the environment. Social responsibility. As Gabi said, it's not charity. It's making, uh, creating an environment which everybody can feel and that they are important and they can change their future through hard work and uh, commitment with good things. So what is the idea that in general? To give people purpose, a cause they can look for, to give people uh, autonomy to decide their own lives based on knowledge to give people the chance of mastering it themselves all the time so uh, it's possible to to make a difference by using this approach what's uh, where we are working more in grower and co-workers succession I just left Seattle uh, two weeks ago uh, they are talking a lot about uh, farmers' succession, coffee growers' succession in the world. How the industry will be able to replace the old generation. So again, uh, with science, with good business, uh, with recognition, with transparency, with direct relationship, there is no other magic of keeping the young generation in the fields without being good for them. So that's why we be, what we believe. Another thing is the Beyond the Borders project. Uh, since we are a small cooperative, 20 growers closed, uh, there is no intention to change that. Um, but we decided to create this project in 2012, 13, 12. I was working only in someone by a farm at that time. Uh, firstly, it started with Atlas Coffee importers in US. Uh, we invited one small coffee, um, associate, coffee grower association. A FASA, As Associação dos Agricultores de Santo Antônio do Amparo. Association of uh, uh, Farmers of Santo Antônio do Amparo. And we provided the same business model, the same platform for them, considering the knowledge, the techniques, uh, our facility, uh, and access uh, to the final buyer for them. In, uh, in a nutshell, being a Sun Coffee member without being a Sun Coffee member. So uh, we are providing them the same opportunity. And the first meeting w was very interesting because the growers show up and they said, oh, it's, you're kidding, it's, it will not work. And Henrique Cambraia was there, the founder of Sun Coffee, and everybody trusts him a lot. And they said, okay, we are going to join that only because you are saying that you are going to cover the risks and you are 
uh, signing of this agreement. And it was only 180 bags with the scores over 82 point that we exported. And five years later, only of this association, this year we exported 900-ish bags. So not only to Atlas Coffee importers. And it's not only a matter of the money, the premium that we are um, making possible for them. It's about pride. Because now the kids, the wives, they can see that the hard work that the husband or wife, there are many women producing coffee, it matters. And it's a reward for their hard work to have their names, their coffees, their sweat, their tears in the product in a consuming country. So there is, a, as I said, it's a huge impact on these people's lives. So they built uh, office, uh, co-shared uh, share, uh, drying uh, facility, warehouse, quality control lab, they are improving their business. And I believe that's a way of keeping the young generation, the next generation in the fields and connected and engaged to coffee. Here, there is a project that we undertake. Uh, it's called Casa da Criança, uh, Kid House. And we take care of the young generation, showing them that they can uh, develop a future, a good future, and be respected and be um, uh, a good uh, life for them and for their sons and daughters. We are training them and showing them that uh, coffee growing, the, all the chain and other business are not uh, bad. Because people had the mindset, it started in the school. The teachers used to say, oh, if you don't study hard, you are going to work in the farms. And we are changing this because we are showing and proving to them that the agri-business, agriculture, livestock nowadays is a very important business. And we, can, we have been applying uh, management, technology, and social benefits, wages, that much better than many medium-sized urban companies in Brazil. So we are trying to change that. And of course, we need to Oh, from this group, 15, three months being trained in Samambaia, uh, Sun Coffee hired nine, and other four were hired, other six were hired in uh, other farms in the region. There are pictures of them showing the passports, the carteira de trabalho. Um, just to explain a bit of what he said now, um, when the majority of coffee production is due with commodity, they don't need to value their labor. So there was a, people from the countryside migrated to the cities because the cities were growing. So that's what he said. The teachers used to say, if you don't study hard, you will have to work in the farms. And now, with the specialty coffee, it's the other way around because the specialty farms need skilled people and they're growing and majority of the times uh, they have better positions, they are paying better than uh, jobs in the small towns. That's it. Thank you, Gabi. This is a kindergarten that uh, we have a partnership with Starbucks Roastery uh, to supply coffee for them. Samambaia Farm was the first one to join the reserve program in Brazil. And we built up uh, alongside them this kindergarten and other uh, facilities, other projects. And we are uh, receiving the, these uh, kids and starting a good condition for them since young age. Our engagement, uh, how we are building up, uh, how we are going up the ladders, uh, always in progress. Uh, I'm 
wearing uh, this T-shirt, uh, World Coffee Research. Uh, the industry finally come, came to realize that science is one of the ways we are going to uh, overcome the challenges that are coming in the future in coffee. And we need to keep ourselves in progress for many reasons, but one, that someone who is not growing or improving is technically decaying or dying, and we need to keep moving forward all the time. But we need to keep ourselves um, attractive for our clients. We need to keep ourselves efficient, resilient to overcome these challenges. And it's, we are calling it progress. For example, in Samambaya, uh, we, are under, we have just established a, a partnership with a research institute who has one of the largest uh, genotype bank. I don't know if it's correct. Makes sense? Makes sense? Genotype yeah. bank? Yeah genetic bank uh, in the world. It was gathered in 1960 in a, a project uh, run by uh, food and agriculture organization. They, the researchers from everywhere in the world, they traveled to origins, uh, Madagascar, Ethiopia, Kenya, and many countries and collected seeds to preserve, to have them preserved. And nowadays, we have more than 80 varieties planted in uh, our lands. And we are going to evaluate them by any variables, such as drought, drought resistant, resistance, pest and uh, diseases resistance, resistance, but most importantly, uh, to uh, improve the quality. Because quality is variety, environment, and processing. And it's very difficult to change the environment, or very expensive. So we need to work in the processing and in the varieties. So we, are, we need to widen the, the, the range of varieties that we have. Quality and consistency, we cannot skip from that, them, that any, any time. We have a protocol and procedures from the farm since the, the harvest start until the coffees arrive at uh, the final destination. Uh, transparency, uh, it's very important for us because the growers need to trust us. They need to, to feel that they are not being cheated. They need to, to see everything that's happening with their coffees. And we are guaranteed, guaranteed that for them. Full traceability, it's very important for the final consumers. And be sure that we, have, we are able to trace back all the single cup that is in this chocolate uh, recipe back to the fields of plantation where it's grown. All the techniques, all the procedures that uh, was applied that, there. Efficient warehousing, logistics, and exports. We, uh, nowadays, um, with many technologies, everything that we have, still there are many companies that are not providing uh, great services. And we want to be great service providers. We are working hard on hardware, structure, investing in software and many other things, procedures, the softwares, uh, considering the company, but most important in the humanware training and engaging the people a lot with us. Great customer care, because as I said, without these clients that we have, there is no way of having this business model going, going uh, ahead. Again with the hat, but that was, no. But it was in purpose, because I just received at that time. Our coffee is natural. We have a standard protocol to dry the naturals. Uh, ripen cherries, uh, three days in a very thin layer, because we need to dry fast in the f first steps of the drying process in order to avoid fermentation, the bad fermentation. 
but afterwards we need to thicken the layer in order to reduce the speed of the drying process because the water molecules start to be uh, strongly tightened to the cell walls and we need to take them out uh, slower than in the beginning in order to avoid damages in the cell wall. So in this way, we can have a very clean, natural, but preserving the body and the fruity taste that a good natural needs to have. And the pulped naturals, regular ones, we pulp only the mature cherries. Uh, this coffee is you are going to, to cup today, it's uh, sweet and in our region, a kind of caramel taste. We have both, but uh, we, uh, we are best at in the naturals in this region. Some awards, since 2000, we have been uh, joining and having good outcomes in the competitions. And in 2016, last year it was a bad year because we had many rains in our region in May and June. And due to a lack of uh, borum, one um, uh, nutrient, the husks of the coffee, due to the too many rain, they expanded and caused some ruptures. And some fungus got inside and fermented. So it was not a good year for uh, uh, quality contests. But in 2016, the first place in Cup of Excellence from one farm in Sun Coffee and many other awards. In 2016, uh, among 30 uh, uh, country, country wise in Brazil, uh, among 30 award winning farms in Cup of Excellence, we had only in Sun Coffee 20 farms, we had three, so 10%. Some friends and partners we have, most, uh, all of them here, relationships lasting more than 10, 10 years. So everywhere in the world. We have few, but very solid relationships around the world. And we want to keep in this way. And we want to have the Matina as a long lasting one. So you can count on us and please um, Provide us any feedbacks as you want. It's going to be very important for us to improve ourselves.